Back to people in power. The conversation of uh, Mr. Onapito Ekomolet, you currently know him as the board chair of Nile Breweries Limited, but he has had a story. Did you know he was a conductor? Probably if you did <laughs> miss it in our first segment, yes, he was. Talking about career, he starts thinking about being a diplomat. He wanted to be an ambassador. And then that switches to being a, a lawyer. And then mass communication. Now that is the gist of the story. Mm. So mass communication was introduced before you um, applied to get into university. Yes, mass communication was introduced at Makerere in 1988. Oh. And I was to join in 1989, mm. so I would be in the second lot. So I switched from law to mass communication. How and why? Did you know anything about it? I spoke it? to the career master. He did not really explain exactly what this course was about, but he mentioned something to do with the public relations. Mm. And somehow it's what clicked for me. And But eventually when I would, I would get into the course, I did not really take my, uh, public relations as my main thing. I ended up in the real journalism, newspaper journalism. Okay. But before I started the course at Makere, there was every effort to stop me from going for mass communication. In fact, on the day the results came, I got AAC. Wow. And uh, there were guests in the house of my sister where I was living, and my in-law, proudly announced how well I'd performed. And the guests eventually asked, so what course? I said, mass communication. One mm. of them said, do you have to go to the university and become a journalist? Mm. <laughs> and say, Why is it because then? They, there by then, and this guy was a lawyer. And I think journalists were looked down as some kind of academic failure as mm. a matter of you, they are not taken as uh, professionals. So they encouraged my in-law to use his contacts at the university to get me to change my course to law. And it was actually done, but I was not settled. I also used my own connections <laughs> and changed back the course to mass communication. Connections, which ones were those that you had at the time? No, I had, but, even as a young person, I had yeah. a friend mm. who had a friend within the university. Aye. And he's the one who managed to, connect, to change for us from First of all, from Mascom to law, then back to Mascom. Oh. So on admission day, or reg registration, I was in Mascom. Did your parents and, know, or did your guardians know your No, your family? Actually, my guardian, <clears throat> my brother-in-law in particular, was actually involved, but he did not know my, my, my behind the scenes. Yeah. He was to defeat him. helping you get yes, to Mascom. To law, to law. To ah, law. Okay. But I defeated him quietly. And eventually, I think we made peace with mm. what I'd chosen. Yes. And I think to this day, there's no regret. So through your course, it wasn't mm. you. So, so should I say it was you were the pioneer class? Or it no, was we, the are the second, we are the second lot. The second yeah. lot yes. of mass communication. Yes. Yes. How did you find the course? Very exciting. And you see, for me, what I loved most was that it allowed me to start working straight away as a campus correspondent for then weekly topic. Mm. I even wrote some fiction stories in the new vision, child stories, mm. kind of uh, things we used to talk about in the village, the mm. tales that children would be told. I, I, I wrote them for, for children's column in the, in the new vision. Mm. So I enjoyed the course. So you actually and, started working while you were still at school? Yes. I never looked for a job. As soon as I completed, mm. I was already having a job in the newspaper. All right. Um, in this case, the monitor was You, you clearly say employer. what had clicked for you mm. for mass communication was public relations. Mm. But later on, you got into, you must into the real journalism, yeah. broadcast journalism and newspapers particularly, so yes, to say. Yes, yes. What's that? Um, because anyway, there were not so many TVs. It was only there were not. It was only UTV. Yes. It was only Uganda. Uganda Radio Uganda. Radio Uganda, uh -huh. UTV. So most of us ended up in the newspapers, oh, yeah. and really that the main newspaper was uh, Weekly Topic, then Weekly Topic gave way to The Monitor. Mm -hmm. So my first employment was The Monitor With in the monitor. 1992, yeah. Okay, so your salary, you're just out, you're already earning good life, huh? not the conductor <laughs> yeah, life and uh, no, good the life. P2 dropout. <laughs> good life, but by today's standards, I think we are paid 200000 Ah. Yeah, the monitor. Then it was actually good money yeah, it was because good money. I yeah. was able to start 
planning already how to build the house and went wow. ahead to do it. I could even chip in some school fees for for, for relatives. Mm. So it was it was good pay. But of course things started moving very fast and soon it was not good enough. And yes. it shaped my next decision. Yes, like... we'll be looking at the next decision. But while <laughs> things were still good, what are your memories of being in the in the newsroom? You're writing for the newspaper, go get your stories, mm. and you have that byline. So and and newspapers were used then. I think for me the most exciting thing is being in what you are today, interviewing people. I ran a column in the monitor that we called Face to face with Onapito Ekomole. Ah. And almost like <laughs> I love the yes, and almost as you are doing today mm. on a weekly basis, I would look for the newsmakers of the week uh -huh. and select one of them and give them hard face to face Q and A questions. Mm. It I think it brought me to a lot of national exposure. Mm. I was more political in my in my journalism. Remember in high school I was mm. a deputy head prefect at hey. the college. Yeah. At the university I was a guild minister of information. Mm. So the political animal in me came yeah. into my journalism. Yes. So I would be reporting from parliament. I would be interviewing politicians. That, that was my really what excited me most. How did you keep your journalistic mm. instinct? Because, you know, mm. when, when you have personal relationships mm. with these people that mm. you interview mm. to mm. some point which could also impact mm. the way you, you mm. do your journalism mm. in itself, but also the exposure that comes may bring mm. with it mm. both good and bad. I think, How did you I think, I think by back then we are much more idealistic in our journalism, if I would say. Mm. And there was not so much coziness between the journalists and the, and sources. the sources. Yeah, mm. like I see today. So there wasn't a lot of conflict of interest. Mm. We could really afford to be hard on, 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 on our sources. We could be hard during interviews. Uh, the stories were fairly much more, mm. more robust, trying to expose. I guess society was also a little bit more innocent. Mm. Corruption stories made true headlines and mm. people would pay attention. Mm. Of course, you know, today things have been normalized in many respects. So mm. you, you don't really have a, a corruption story that will shake the country anymore. So our journalism, yeah, it was the the idealistic, what you may call the pure journalism. And, and I should say that kind of journalist face to face with Onapito yes, Ikomolo, it yes. actually gave you the social capital. It gave me the social capital, and I believe uh, I'm harvesting it up to today. Uh, man, I meet many people who still remember me from those days, oh. uh, skinny, small journalists who mm. ask tough questions. And, you know, I even used to, for example, today as we speak, the Iranian president is in the country. Yes. I used to push so hard to reach such a person oh. and interview them. Mm. I would interview foreign dignitaries, and I think it, it really gave me a lot of, as you say, social capital, which eventually, of course, helped me to propel you to the next level. Yeah, to so other. you said, actually, as you moved on to your next level, mm. which many journalists sh struggle to know, mm. at what point in time do you move? Because definitely you may not be stuck entirely, mm. especially with the kind of journalism terrain that we mm. do have. Mm. What shaped your mind to now think, enough of this, I have to move? First of all, the first uh, push, I mean, move from the monitor was, I would say, was partly forced because uh, we had uh, a pay dispute with the owners, with a, a, couple, a couple of a crop of young journalists. Most of us had come from the mass communication mm. class. And as the newspaper, we saw it growing. We naturally started agitating for more pay and maybe were impatient. Mm. And so we, we are sucked. Oh, we are sucked from so the. So sad. We are sucked from the monitor, mm. and we founded the Crusader. So that was my oh. next step in journalism, mm. the Crusader newspaper, which stayed in business from 1995 up to 1999, mm. some four years. And it was a very robust newspaper. Mm. It has its own place in Uganda. You started it with some friends that you were working yes, with that monitor. Yes, and. Uh, 
yeah, a lot of young people, some of them you may know them. Yes. Peter Mwesige, mm -hmm. George Lugalambi, mm -hmm. uh, Richard Tusime of, uh, of the famous Red Paper, mm -hmm. Dismas in Kunda. Yeah. All these people are with me in founding the Crusader. Okay. It was in good faith, we departed the Monitor mm. and we ran the Crusader. Yeah, but I was also teaching at Makerere, so I was kind of having two jobs. Oh, yes. you'd gone back to teach. You yes. were teaching journalism students yes. too? Yes. After completing, I was made a teaching assistant. I went to the American University in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. got a master's. So by the time I left the monitor with my group, I was also a lecturer at Makere University Mass Comp. So I had those two jobs. I, because I, I wanted to ask actually that mm. at what point in time did you think about upgrading and it was great that you had actually already <laughs> upgraded with school because you mm. get comfortable, have a job, have a good job, it's paying and you feel like ah, the I rest know. can stay. Mm. So the Crusader closes in 99. What were the reasons, first of all? Did you run back? But rocks? before the Crusader closed, yes. I had already become a member of parliament. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... In 1998, mm. I went and became a member of parliament for Amuria County. Uh, where you and started your primary Yes, home. that is my home district. Mm. And... Uh, First of all, what pushed mm. you there? I know that in your one-on-one -on -one with Onapito, face-to-face, yes. sorry, yes. with Onapito, yes, you were mm. interacting mm. with these persons. Mm. So what, what, what was that spark for you to think, mm, I should go and represent my people? Yeah, while at the Crusader, one time I was uh, asked to go and speak to the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association meeting mm. in Kampala. The Commonwealth MPs, they were at Serena. And I was to speak to them on uh, media relations, politicians and the media. And I spoke in the, in the assessment of the audience so well that I started hearing them saying, eh, in whose constituency is this guy coming from? <laughs> this, uh, that person is in trouble. This guy Don't, ask. Is, <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask those questions. You so somehow, lo and behold, by 1998, remember there had been elections in 1996, the yes. first elections yes. under the NRM. <clears throat> but my MP was appointed the Army Commander, and that is General J.J. Odongo today, oh. who is the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Yes. So the, he left his seat to concentrate on his Army Command role. Mm. So there was a by-election, and then I had a number of friends in the NRM. I mm. asked them... Uh, is there a favored candidate by the NRM? They said, no, and I think you, you, should, you should try your luck. Mm. So they gave me encouragement, and I went in. Mm. Of course, I must also say the political animal in me, as I told you, from high school, mm. from Makere Guild politics, was there. So it was sort of a natural urge that I should go for, for the parliamentary seat. Yeah. No money. So it was it was Tell very risky. 